Well, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for attending our meeting, either electronically or the members that are here. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Dave Ryan. I'm the Deputy uh, Chair. Um, Ken is away. He has joined us electronically, but he is in Christchurch, I believe. So thank you, Ken, for coming in. Um, we have apologies from Terry Walker, who was also away on leave, and Tamsin Latale, who has business commitments and could not attend today. Any other apologies? Uh, yes, Bruce Hinson. Uh, it will not be at the meeting. I'll stand in for him. Bill Simpson. Bruce, Bruce Hinson. Well, very good. Okay. Need to record it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any items not on the agenda? The Sorry. Sorry. Can we please get a mover and seconder for those apologies, please? Also move. I'll see. Thank you. Um, the conflict of interest. I do. Okay. For the community gardens. Thank you. And the minutes confirmation. You all have received the minutes of our last meeting, which was held. And are there any? Sorry, um, excuse me. Through the chair again. We just need a first and second for those um, conflict, interest. For the conflict of interest. For the conflict of interest. Can I have a mover and a second of for that? Moved by, I, I don't know if you can, can you? No, I'll, I'll move it. No, because I'm keen seeing it. Keen seeing it. Keen moves it and a Gary seconds it. Yes, sorry. Thank you. Uh, minutes for confirmation. Seen it move and second it. Yes, yeah. I'll move the day be accepted. I'll second that. Thank you. It's Gary and Kay Esther. Uh, public forum. We have a letter here from Rob Boston uh, that has been tabled, um, and I would move that that is accepted um, in relation to 101 Lindsay Road for the working group. Oh, second then. All in favour? Aye. Um, and also, um, Warren Hunt has a. Warren's online. Yes, Warren's online. Do you want to add anything, Warren? To yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, it's Warren Hutt um, from Rangi Avenue. Um, it was really just to make some additional comments, uh, just in respect to the proposed car park uh, at Island at the Island View Reserve. Um, you're probably all aware uh, that on the 27th of February uh, there was a residents meeting on site with. Um, which Eileen kindly uh, uh, arrived at the meeting, uh, which so thank you for that. Um, I, I guess I just wanted to reaffirm uh, a few points um, out of that meeting. There's been some subsequent correspondence um, and we've also put in a uh, official information act uh, a request as well, which we're waiting on uh, documentation and the information from which I think is due uh, at some stage next week. Um, so just, just to, I guess, reaffirm uh, I guess the concerns uh, of the of the local residents um, regarding this proposed car park um, it sort of came out of the blue. Um, uh, there was meant to be some, um, I guess, consultation with the uh, residents, which uh, uh, which hi was highlighted in the uh, your meeting back in November last year. Um, we still haven't had that uh, consultation process. Um, uh, Eileen indicated that that would occur. Uh, during March, <clears throat> um, we're now in April, so um, just a, a question as to when that consultation process will actually begin. Um, some of the, you might might just want to comment on that at the end of my my uh, uh, couple of comments I've got here. I, I guess um, the, the, the biggest concerns that we have is, you know, why is there such a large car park going in? Uh, there seems to be some mixed messaging uh, between um, Eileen and the and the uh, other members of TCDC regarding whether this is actually a car park for cars or is it a freedom camping car park, um, which has been referred to in the capex plan uh, put forward on your on your website. Clearly, from the design of the car park, uh, it's for freedom camping, um, with nine meter uh, long car parks uh, by three meters. Um, if you go around the rest of Wangamata. Um, all the car parks are five metres by three metres. 
uh, Williamson Park, et cetera. The only large car parks are down at the trailer, the boat trailer park, and they're about 10 metres by three metres. So a um, little bit concerning that the, um, I guess the uh, the planning and the in the in the in the notification that's gone out is is um, looks like it's for freedom camping. Um, if if it's not, um, well then we need to just be uh, it needs to be very clear from the outset. Um, the other thing regarding the, the ceiling, and it was raised by uh, one of the gentlemen back in November on the community board meeting, is why is it being sealed? Why can't it just be in grass? Um, and if you again. Uh, my last time in Wong Mata a couple of weeks ago, I went around the various reserves. Uh, and if you go to Williamson Park, uh, you go to Beach Road, uh, you go to the trailer park as well. All of those car parks are unsealed. Uh, the road entering into, i.e., Williamson Park is sealed, but all car parks are not sealed. So we're sort of a little bit sort of baffled as to why the council are proposing to have a large car park with it being sealed um, and also. Uh, you know that that area is, is subject to quite a bit of flooding during the uh, during the winter period. So, um, I guess the other issues that we have is that under the Reserves Act, uh, there's no freedom. You know, freedom camping is not allowable, um, and you seem to be using the bylaws to get around the uh, the, the, uh, the government legislation, uh, which is somewhat uh, concerning. Uh, and also the uh, reserves management plan that was put out last year. Uh, there is no mention at all of any of the um, the new proposed freedom camping car park. So I thought that would have been, or the residents thought that would have been uh, would have been highlighted uh, as well. Um, so those are just some of our concerns that we have. Um, I guess I wanted to reiterate that Island View Reserve is a uh, a very popular area. It has become increasingly more popular over the last ten years. It's a family orientated area. Um, and if you take the time and effort to go down there during the summer period, you would see that. So uh, we just see that there's some, uh, uh, th there are issues regarding freedom camping in that area. Uh, and they're, they're just not compatible with the use of, of that area at the moment. So we just want to highlight that. I know that that goes through a bylaw review. Um, and there will be a number of residents that will be uh, objecting to that as well. So um, since we had that meeting uh, on the 27th, which is about 40 residents, I've received numerous uh, emails from residents all around that area um, that are, are highly concerned with what's happening. Um, I guess we, uh, the, the, the other concern that we have as residents is that I'm going to have to cut you short very soon. Mr. Yeah, because we we start we stumbled across it, um, and and I guess we are still just waiting to see when this uh, consultation process is actually going to occur. So, some feedback on that maybe at this meeting or uh, or uh, at some stage would be greatly appreciated. Obviously, being a public forum, we can't um, reply to any of that, but thank you. It's been noted, and as a result of that, um, somebody will be in touch, I'm sure, to advise when that conference about, um, consultation will take place. Thank you, anyone. Thank you. Um, and Helen McCabe, I understand you wish to talk as well, is that correct? Yes, thank you, Dave. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes, thank you. Yep, just a quick update. Um, we've noticed some really great work coming out of TCDC Solid Waste Team. They've got extra people on board now, which is really, really helping with, um, you know, public communication around recycling on the website and um, just direct co communication with our trust on how TCDC are progressing around this curly issue of our RTS. Um, our, our layout, of course, is, um, you know, has its um, problems, but um, they've got someone working expressly on how that layout can be uh, altered and and to meet the requirements of more waste minimization. So I'm really heartened by that work done by that team. Um, and uh, I know that 
all aboard and stuff. See the need for better waste minimization. That's very clear. And um, I'm pretty optimistic that we can come to to something that makes it happen. Um, the resource recovery business case is also in progress. Um, our nuts and bolts guy in Team Seagull Centre, Manus, the manager of the Team Seagull Centre, who's got vast experience in waste management, um, is working on that. Um, we feel confident that a collaboration on site is possible. And given the strong alliance of our resource recovery trusts across Coromandel, it's a better way. And it's a better way forward for the region. It's a better way forward for the communities. And it will be more effective for reducing our waste footprint and for reducing transportation costs of, of much of the waste, which currently just goes into the pit. So um, just wanted to update you on, on what we're doing there and how we're feeling. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Any questions for Helen? All right, thank you very much, Helen, for that. Uh, we move on to um, 2.1, which is the request to change the purpose of approved retail. I'd like to move we accept, uh, receive those, the public forum. Yeah, I'll second them. Thank you, Ken. I'll we'll second them. Um, so this is in relation to the community grant just, for which. Um, through the chair, Dave, can you just all those in favour, please? Sorry? All those in favour for the public forum. Uh, all those in favour of the public forum, please say aye. Aye. No. Thank you. Um, and this is in relation to the Wangmata Community Garden, which Kay um, is not able to speak to because of the conflict of interest. But basically, it's a request for some money that was not spent uh, to $923 uh, to go towards a lawnmower uh, for the gardens. Um, any comment on that? Happy to I'd, like, I'd like to move that we receive it and number two, that we approve the request to allow them to purchase the lawnmower. That, that was Ken and Gary, Esther. All right. All in favour? Aye. Thank you. Um, and then the community board liaison representative, the Wangmata Wastewater Treatment Plant Community Liaison Group. Just need a move second for it. For, for the first one? Uh, no. Right. So you need to do a move and a second for the, for the report? Oh, that's what they had. No. Okay. Mover and seconder for the report, please, in relation to the lawnmower. Oh, not known for the lawnmower, we're on to the lawnmower. We're on to the lawnmower. Yes, they need to move and seconder for the report, and then I'll talk to the report. Okay. So, can we have a mover and seconder for that one? I'll move it. I'll see you. Okay, so this, is, uh, this was a letter that was given to uh, Ken, our board chair. Um, so I'll take the report as read and the community board can have a discussion about who they wish to appoint as their liaison rep. I'd like to um, put forward Terry Walker. So I'd second that. So it's been moved and seconded that Terry Walker be our representative on the liaison group. All in favour say aye. 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 Okay. Terry. Management of the refuge transfer stations. Um, You've got to move. I'd move. Yeah, you move. Well, I'd move. I'd move that um, this report be accepted. And, and, and the notice of motion. And the notice of motion. I'll second that. All in favour? Aye. Uh, sorry, can I just ask a question? Did, wasn't there a different notice of motion? Is that, yeah, it's just. Yeah, apologies. Thank you for um, jumping in again through the chair. I just want to note that I circulated an amended notice of motion as it went out with the wrong uh, cop version of it. So I'm just yeah. displaying that on the screen now, and all of the members had a copy of that. Can you just make that a bit bigger? Thanks, Esther. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> So the community board uh, 
resolving that resolution that is on the screen at the moment. Has that been moved and seconded? We're just a very... Uh, yes, Dave and Kay. Yeah. Oh, so instead of opting, it's removing. All in favour? Yeah. Aye. All right. Do you want to discuss that one? Yeah. <coughs> so we just say uh, that you're on to 2.4 and get a mover and seconder. Okay, I'll talk to the 2.4 is the Wong Matar Community Board submission. Um, all in favour? Uh, no, I'll, I'll move it. Oh, you move it. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favour? Right. So Esther's got the submission up on the screen, so we'll just go through it and make sure that the board can you. It can make it a little bit bigger, thanks, Esther. My glasses aren't. That's it. Now I can see. <laughs> this is just the cover page, so if you'd like to move on to page two, which is the actual questions on it. Okay, boat rank fees. Do you, do you support the introducing fees at three additional boat ranks, Wongapa, Royal Billy Point and Tairua Wharf? Do the board agree or not? Say yes, no or unsure? I think it's no, isn't it? Okay, so no. no. Okay, and the Fongata comments is Fongata Community Board do not have a view on the boat ranks outside Fongata Ward. So you all in agreement with that comment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next one, do you support the introduction of the boat launching fees and an increase in the daily boat parking fees at the nine boat ranks specified in our consultation? Board have selected yes. Uh, with the comment, the Fongata Community Board only supports increased parking and boat launching fees if the income is used for boating related expenses, i.e. drenching, parking duties, and not wharves. Yep. It's, uh, it's not really a yes, no answer. It's sort of a, a qualified, and a, I'm not even sure it's an unsure, if that makes sense. <laughs> we are yes unsure. Or no. <laughs> we are unsure, aren't we? Because well, we don't know whether they're actually, if we say yes, are they then going to increase the parking and we don't see the, the money go for the dredging in that? Well, okay, well, maybe unsure is the best of the so three. So I options. think unsure is the best. Well, unless we say go to ourselves a little bit no, unless. Yeah, we've either been, yeah, I agree with Gary, it's either got to be no or unsure. I think no, conditional upon what we've mentioned there. Okay, no. All right. Okay, next one is Esther. Wharf fees. Do you support the proposed changes to our wharf fees and applying the same fees across the district? Yes. Board of CGS? Yes. Happy with that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Next one is Capital Works Program. We wish to make any comments. The Fongmata Community Board would like to ensure that any uncompleted capital works and the 21-22 year are carried forward into the 22-23 financial year. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Dean's got his hand up. Who's got his hand up? Somebody's got their hand up. Uh, morning, board. Um, just through the chair, on the first question, uh, which is around boat ramp fees, um, you were asked whether you support, and you said no, but your comments say that you don't hold a view. So I, I wonder whether that should be unsure instead. Um, I'll just leave that with you. Thank you. Well, that's yeah. outside our water too. It's outside, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. So, so do you want to change that to unsure? Unsure. Okay. Okay, moving on, Masarani land purchase. Do you support the updated Masarani land purchase proposal, option one? Yes. Uh, you've chosen unsure. Fongata Community Board has no view on the Matarangi land purchase. So once again, you'd have to go unsure if that's the same as question one. Yeah, okay. I don't. Move on. Any additional comments? Uh, Fongata Community Board would like to see the budget split between dredging of the channel and other boating expenditure and the maintenance of the wharf. The board feels that the boat parking and launching income should be used for the dredging and the maintenance of the wharfs from rates. People with those comments? I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so the resolution 
So you received and you confirm that submission. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, we're good to go. What is the name of the award? Oh, the award. Yeah, it oh, sorry, Southeastern. Southeastern. I was going to say, we're Yeah, so, yeah, so the first, first point, the being raised before, it talks about following the <clears throat> So we need to go back to that resolution. We need to go back to that submission and change it to South Eastern Ward. I'll just change it to Fongmata Board Area. Okay, go yeah. back up. Fongmata Community Board, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so change the wording from Fongmata Ward to South Eastern Ward. No, no. No, one is the board area. Right. Because mm. the Tyra is in the, and Billy yeah. Point are in the. Uh, and the same with that Capital Works program. Same with the Capital Works program, is that's what's in there? Yeah. No. No, no that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. fine. Thank you. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> So we're on to 3.1, new grazing lease. I so move. I'll second. That's Ken and Ken and Kay and Esther. So you're on to 10.3.1. Yeah. What is it today? The Lindsay Road. Oh. We've done that. We've done those two. Yes. And we've done those, we've done those three. So you're on to um, new grazing lease for the Latham family out at Only Mana Drive. Any comments on that? Uh, Nicole's online. Uh, you got any of the board have any, want to ask Nicole any questions? No. No? Oh. So, we're going to do so, it uh, you've, you've done that. Yep. So, you just need to um, fall in favour. Fall in favour, say aye. Aye. Against? Karen. Thank you. And the community board proposal, Lindsay Road. So 3.2. Um, as stated before, we have a report that's been tabled from Rob Boston in relation to um, the land at 101 Lindsay Road. I'll send that to see your report. So Member is, is Kay and yep. seconder. I'll second it. Okay. All in favour? Uh, no, no. no. Got to make a choice, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to, and you also have to make a recommendation. So first part of the resolution is receives the report. Yes. Uh, number two, resolves to take no further action. Right. Number three, requests the council consider declaring the land, in which case it would be recommends to council consider declaring the land at declaring the property. That's what we support. Yeah, support. number three. Number three, so you support yeah. number three? Yeah. So take number two out, Esther, and puts recommend that council consider declaring the property at 101 Lindsay Road, Fongmata, a reserve under the Reserves Act 1977. Kia ora, thank you. Um, just to double check, do community board have delegation to recommend on these matters? Yeah. Under the terms of recommendation. Yeah. I think they can only request to consider in this instance. Okay. Well, we request them to consider it. Please. Yes. Thank you. That's yep. Four point one. All those in favour. All those in favour. All in favour, say aye. Aye. Carry. Um, four point one is the festival event rule for the proposed district plan. And I understand Mish is on the line for this to discuss it if required. Sarah. Is Mishka there? Mishka should be in the office. I recommend that we receive this report. Need a second. Yeah. 
they haven't, uh, they've not arrived yet, they could possibly still be on their way. So we, we can hold that and go on to the next one. Move on, thank you. So the next one is the Island View Car Park 5.1, and it's in relation to the deferral of the project. So, um, can I have a move for the on moving the report? And I second it. Discussion? Well, I, we really got a process we need to have dealt with. Uh, the consultation the consultation that uh, I need to <laughs> Anyhow, uh, it just seems to me that I think we probably need to defer this until we get the consultation process. That's my view. This is on. Uh, I love you. <clears throat> so, what is the board going to? I just want to know why, again, we're going to defer a project that's been on the cards for at least five years. First of all, we need something there to park cars. On the weekend, it was absolute chaos. And it wasn't camper vans. And this is the whole point of this thing, is to get the cars off all these people's front lawn. This is what they moan about every Christmas, whether it's freedom camping or car parking. Now we've got people saying they don't want parking there. Well, I'm sorry, Island View is very popular and it's going to continue. I don't care if it's grass or whatever, flatten it out, they can park where they are. I am tired of all this stuff gets deferred when it's the best thing for the community. Well, I, I with respect, I would have thought that the reserve is not there for cars, it's there for people. It's not the reserve, it's the roading. It's all the roading. I, I think we, until we have the consultation process, we're just throwing balls in the air and they're not coming down. So I think we need to wait till that is done. Well, Gary, what you're suggesting isn't what number three says. Number three is talking about the Freedom Camping Bylaw. You're talking about deferring until after the consultation. So, yeah. so what you said. We can receive the report. But uh, we just until we've had, uh, it's got to be deferred until we've dealt with the process. Well, we don't want number two because we want it as a car park as well to get the cars off the road because you can't you can't get out of a car park at Island View when everyone's parked along the wall. It's impossible to back your car out. Well, do we get rid of cars completely? That might solve the problem. Well, you can't. It's a popular place. Well, I think we need to have the consultation process. No, I agree we need to do that. Yes. I need. I agree we need to consult, but we've been consulting on this for five years. It's not a new thing. Well, in the end, there's a lot of people who do not feel they've been consulted. We're going to go through the process, and that's what we have to do. So let's do it and get on with it. Okay, so the resolution, so we, number one is receives a report. So happy with that. Number two, confirms the new Island View Reserve car park can be designed to accommodate freedom camper vehicles only. You want to change that? That, that should not be. Let's delete it. Let's yeah. delete it. Delete it. Number three, agrees to defer the construction of the Island View car park until freedom camping bylaw review process has been completed. No, no. no just until the consultation process has been completed with the, with the community. Well, do we need to even say anything there? If, if there's processes to be followed, then that has to happen before, whether it's in terms of the bylaw or in terms of consultation. They need to be We do, don't need to state it, do we? <laughs> well, um, uh, Rick said we need to be specific and uh, until the consultation process has been completed. Okay. 
All right, so that's the amendment to number three to read um, until such time as the consultation process has been completed. Yep. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you for that. Now you can go back and do the ball point. This is all fun. Ball point one. Good morning. Thank you for coming over for this. Okay, so this is the festival event rule proposed district clean recreation passive zone. Do you want to speak to that? Ms. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Mishka. I haven't met a few of you before. Uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, you've all read the report. Um, I guess uh, what it's outlining is that to just remove the rule due to the hierarchy of the plan, it would mean that every single uh, event and festival in the district within the recreation passive zone would need a non compliant resource consent, which roughly speaking is the more onerous resource consent you can get. Um, so it would be uh, a greater sort of bureaucratic hurdle to get over um, than is currently specified um, in the district plan. Um, so if the goal is to reduce the bureaucracy. That's probably not the path you want to go down. If the goal is to increase control over the role, then maybe that is the path you want to go down. Um, and then I think Bruce had some. Yeah, to good, that. yeah good morning. My name's I'm Bruce Baker, I'm policy planner with the district, looking after the district plan. The, um, the, the RMA sets out the process and schedule one for any change to the district plan. And that's a statutory process that um, council has to follow for any plan change. Um, there are changes you can make to the district plan under clause 16 of schedule one, which are which are minor, have have, um, have neutral effects, and this would be not considered to be within the scope of that clause 16. So that's put to one side um, straight away. So the statutory process in Schedule 1 is the one that would, would have to be followed for, the, uh, for a plan change, which includes um, uh, consultation and um, writing a, a, a report to be publicly notified for submissions, and then we go on to a, a hearing and a, um, and a recommendation to Council after that, where a decision is issued um, for, uh, based on that recommendation of the commissioners at the hearing. So that that that's <laughs> right. based on well, that is, is the hearing is held and the commissioners make the. Oh, oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about the previous hearing. No, no, no. That's a separate resource consent process. So if you apply for resource consent under the rules of the plan, um, the resource consent can be issued with conditions that actually. See, one of the doesn't change the plan. One of the reasons I'm on council is because it's, I did the fight to stop. Um, the commercialisation of Williamson Park, and I don't know if you've had the opportunity of reading the Commissioner's report. I have read But as, as, as the Commissioner said, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for Rule 7. Yeah. And, that, and he, he did give some criticism of that rule, specifically for a park had been gifted for public use. And so I, I, I got involved, and I, to some degree, heard various stories why this came about in the district plan, and it seems it might have been Someone up in Coral Mandor had a farm and was having boozy things, people charging people to come, and that might have been the trigger for including this. But when I looked at, as I've now been provided with, I was thinking this had happened in 2017, but it was 2014. Yeah. And what uh, what took place in 2014, and I managed to find the Fongmata Community Board submission on it, signed by Terry Walker. Uh, this is not even mentioned. It's not even on the horizon. It's it's one of those things that's gone through. People not knowing it was going to affect. Because we had following this, we had a number of years still continuing with the summertime festival, and then suddenly, because of the commercial functions of the park, that stopped. So what I'm saying is, what we need to do is whether we increase it from 500 to 1500 people as being the limit. Uh, because there's lots of functions. For example, it, Beach Shop technically breaches it all the time where it goes to other reserves and we don't do anything about it. You know, there are over 500 and there's only one approved. 
uh, under this thing. So we need to sort this out so we can get see the problems we've had. Some of you may not remember in the 90s, but we used to have rights because there was nothing provided. And then we had liquor bands and police coming along doing all sorts of things. Then we ended up with Summertime Festival and we calmed everything down. It was all great. And then when we had it stop because of them enforcing this, we started having trouble again. Mm -hmm. So we've got to sort it out. And what we need to do is work the best way to sort it out, because I can tell you the public who are here, who live here or are non-residential would come here, they want something that can have back to family entertainment in the park over that short period so there's no hassles and no problems. So that's what we need to work together on. How do we do this? Okay, so just so I'm clear, you're wanting to have more frequent but less sort of new, um, as in less uh, higher effects. <laughs> so you, you don't want multiple commercial no, so uh, concerts or anything, but you want free, free, free as, as, as was gifted to the park, free access to the public. So people can come along as they used to have functions on. Yeah. And if families would come and sit around, it would it change as the evening went on. Then they'd take the younger kids home and go to bed, then the other ones would be there, and adults would be there. It all got largely policed by the families. And we've got to go back to the good days we had, which this this is unintended consequences of this rule seven. Yeah. And we need to come together and work out a way so we can do it. I tried to do this right at the beginning when I got elected in 2019. Yes, I'm told. We'll do it. We'll get on to it. Well, it didn't happen. And I kept asking. And it's just getting sidetracked. And now we're running out of time for this coming Christmas. So we need to use our combined efforts to sort the problem. Right. Well, the quickest way for Christmas would be a resource consent that changes the number, maybe keeps the standards the same. But that's a, a consent process to follow. But if you're, um, if you're looking at a plan change, that would, um, wouldn't be completed by Christmas. Yeah, but that's why I tried to get it started at the end of 2019. And I was told it was happening and told again, it is happening. And then just BS comes on. And in the end, they say, we've changed our minds. It's not going to happen. So I, we, the, 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 the rate of pay has been given a bad deal on this by the council. And the council needs to fix the problem. So you come up with a way we can have some family entertainment, yeah. and we need to get something done for Christmas. Yeah, through, the, through the chair, I'd just like to say that we were dealt this by, we were told, three members. Where was the consultation with the communities? No consultation. Now you're saying we had to consult. How come it got put in in the first place? So without the, any the rules? rule or the, the resource? No, documents? the 500 yeah, uh, that was consulted through the district plan change, so it was probably it not, not, I've, I've read it not I've publicly read done to all of it, and I can't see it was not any, any comment from anyone no, was in this area because it wasn't thought to be specifically to affect Williamson Park, and it did, and it continued on as it was, and then suddenly we had this commercial thing. Hey, what? Well, as far as the consultation goes, um, the, the the rule was part of the district plan review. Um, I know it's one role in the recreation and passive zone, part of the whole district plan. Um, that, the consultation was done in 2012 from October through to January 2013 with the draft district plan. That was, we had uh, uh, well over 40 meetings district wide on that draft and we received not over 900 comments on that draft, which were all put to the District Plan Review Committee. Were, were there any specifically from people in this area? But I couldn't find any. Well, I'd have to look at that. Yes. Well, it, 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 it snuck under the radar. It did. Well, it, it was publicly... Yeah, no, I, 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 I just can yeah. tell you something that's yeah. a great concern we have in this, uh, this District 10 Coromandel District Council. We have half the people who are non-resident. We had in this ward 70% of non-resident, and they don't get the local papers. And I raised at the last council meeting, which um, Rex uh, Cato, our um, CEO, was looking at putting up signs so people know what's happening. Because people do not know what's happening, and that's why it's slid under the radar. And we've got to keep people informed. Otherwise, what's the point of having a democratic process? So that's, we need to fix it. 
Can I just ask whether there's a simple or non-complicated way that we can increase from 500 to 1500 without going through a full? The only way to do that would be through making application for a resource consent. As I, uh, at the moment, that's a, would be a restricted discretionary activity depending on the scope of the application. Uh, so that that to increase above the permitted activity standard of 500 becomes a restricted discretionary activity requiring a resource consent under the current law. And could that be completed by for Christmas, this Christmas? I see a nod. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit, with resource consent, sometimes it's a little bit hard to give you an exact time frame. So in terms of once you lodge a resource consent application, council has 20 working days to process it. If it's then notified, that that is extended out. Um, but that's not taken into account the amount of time to prepare an application. But yes, roughly, you could, provided there were no... Hello, you know. Brian. Hello, through the chair, you, I mean, you've got the two experts in the room, so the only thing I was going to add, but I wasn't going to cut across Mishka, was the um, the delay would be if it was publicly notified and we had um, submitters. So. But I'll leave it to the two experts to, I was just putting my face up to, so you're aware of them. Yeah. yeah. I gather all these things you didn't hear. You were saying if there were objections. So submissions, submission. yeah, yeah, yeah. they could be in support, which the original resource consent for Williamson Park was publicly notified, you were involved in that process, um, and that, that does add to the time, but you know, that's in terms of a fair and transparent process, that's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, that would be the, the quickest way to do it, and I think it's important to realise that a, a plan change to it wouldn't just affect Williamson Park, it would affect every recreation passive zone in the district. Um, so, and the outcome then becomes even more uncertain because you've got uh, different wants and needs from different factions of the, the community. So if you're wanting to focus this change on Williamson Park, I would recommend the resource consent option. It's cheaper, it's quicker, and it's more focused. Uh, well, well, I think, I think yeah. Williamson Park is quite unique. It's, yeah. it's nationally famous, yeah. and uh, that's what people will come to Pond on the Tar for, yeah. the beach shop and, and Williamson Park and, and Christmas time. And we just want to keep keep it going as we manage to get it to a stage where yeah. it's loved by families. Can I ask what the issue is with the current resource consent? Oh, I see. Did. No, no, so that's the district plan rule, but the resource consent gives allowances it's greater than that. It's, it's too restrictive. Too restrictive. Okay, so uh, potentially a variation or a new resource consent application yeah. to open that up again. Um, but the same with a, a district plan process, things can change through the process of, you know, you apply for this due to public, um, you know, feedback. Residents may be not being happy with it being opened up. Things can change. As so. soon as it as soon as it comes to the council that somebody wants something, it's just so restrictive. Yeah so expensive that they come to the council for to us or the community board yeah. for money to help them we can't do that yeah so they just pull away so yeah. we're not having any family plans i can tell you that 2019-20 after we had the decision and everything i and some other people were prepared to pay for a cover band to play in williamson park no cost to the council yeah. oh no i know you're breaking the rules here. So we couldn't do it. Ken, have you got anything that you wish to add? Well, the only thing I'd comment on is um, while a lot of the discussion has been around Williamson Park, the issue actually applies to other reserves in the district. And I would hate to see us taking a piecemeal approach if there is a, an issue that may be causing concerns in other parts of the district. I mean, even just thinking more locally, Oni Mana, for example, um, my preference would be to throw this back to council because that's where the uh, the power lies and have it debated at the council. I don't think as a community board we can sort of say go ahead and recommend making the change. I'd like it to be reported back to council for them to to discuss it at the council level and see what the feeling is around the, the whole council table. So I'm not Thank sure you. how to draft that. Through, through, yeah, the, the, the suggested resolution pretty much is suggesting yeah. while you're presenting where, where it says notes the staff recommendation to council that blah blah blah. But if you want to add to that, 
then we need to add whatever else you want to note to council. Yes. And that's where you can provide your direction or request through the council. So, so you, you, like it, it starts with noting that to council because Ken's quite right. It, it, it's a council decision. Okay. Um, but if you want to add further direction that you wish council to consider based on what Mishka and Bruce have provided yeah. in terms of the answers, now's the chance to do that, which will go through to the uh, council meeting in May. Yeah, I, I didn't take from that, Rex, that number two was actually going to end up on the council um, agenda. Yeah, we can get some guidance here at least. Yeah. Um, if it helps, this report is going to the next school council meeting. Uh, I've got a draft that Leslie's in the process of reviewing. That's just this tweet uh, with the direction. So, yeah. So what we need from you as a board is if there's something that can be included or added to that report from council, to, sorry, to council, with some suggest or with, with what you were trying to achieve, I suppose, you hope, um, which, which will help Mishka and Leslie and Bruce to provide further guidance to council. Because, you know, I think you've heard today, if you go the full district plan, change process, it's got some severe implications both in terms of timing and cost, which Council would, would, would be considering, but also further unintended consequences across the whole of the district. Sure. If you, if you, however, go along the lines of, you know, either a variation to the resource consent or a, a consent process, that to me is what I'm hearing is what, what you are generally trying to achieve, which, which would support both what you're trying to achieve, what the community is trying to achieve, um, and doesn't need to progress down that that, yeah. that broad path. But yeah. I, again, I'm not the expert. Is this the end use? I'm going to look forward to your suggestions. Uh, recommend that the council that rules seven festival, um, whatever it is, be very to enable non commercial. Um, um, yeah, um, active, with the, 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 the separating commercial from non-commercial, it can be tricky and was mentioned in that um, the hearings um, recommendation for Wilkinson Park resource consent where the effects can be very similar, you know, um, whether it's a community-based event or a professional, you know, a, a commercial one. If you're a neighbour and it's the same level of noise, that's the same level well, of Well, there's other restrictions um, there which can cover that. Okay, yeah, with, with, uh, yeah, requirements. yeah. Um, but the same if you're, you know, reducing the amount of people, or sorry, taking away that um, the restriction on people. Yeah, the same. So just thinking about the, the decision from the commissioner of that hearing we had, he specifically said it lasts us for what fifteen years. Yeah, uh, thirty. I think it is through to 2033. Yeah, yeah so we'll we'll find find the district plan time. will be reviewed before that expires. The district plan. There's no way we can do that time frame. Is there any way that could be varied? Yes. Yeah, the Water Commission is. Yeah, so you can apply for a variation to a resource consent. If it's too far beyond the scope of the application, then they'll say just apply for a new resource consent. Except um, that, that, that comes up completely in the hearing and it's part of the whole thing that was considered about what was happening in the park that traditionally was happening. Right, I mean, you can use that, um, what, uh, my background is a consultant planner, so what usually happens in those sort of instances is you use that original decision as a bit of a jumping off platform. So this was already approved, therefore what we're asking to raise it to 30 events a year as opposed to 20 so isn't that far away and we can support it because of this, this, this and this. Um, but any information will be assessed on its, on its merits, so... Because we have to be careful with this commercial if we discount yeah. it completely, because the beach hop have markets and all sorts of and things. And that's the thing and, you can. And they have food trucks. That is commercial. So yeah. you have to be careful with the wording. The commissioner basically dismissed yeah. that, that separation. Yeah, sure. But what you're going to have is you're going to have people. There may be commercial events where you can go and buy things, but you have free access to the park. Yeah, so that might be a, a standard that you think about instead. You know, it's not fenced off, it's not excluded. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the ins and outs of every option we, we can assess further. I, I think it's just important that you understand that things can be changed 
massively from what you first apply for, which is what happened with this rule. They didn't originally have the capital numbers and then through submissions, that's what changed. Um, and including a submission from the Coromandel, um, uh, Coldwell Coromandel Community Board that specifically asked for a capital number. That's, that's the one where they're having the problem. That guy, the farmer up there, yeah. having these big boots up. Yeah. So they're 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 really all we can do is recommend it goes back to council yeah. and what, 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 what wording I said be very to enable or second be very to I don't know. Yeah, I mean there are many combinations of words that we well, want. Yeah. 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 We want the best yeah. one. Do you yeah. want to think of something and then we can just pause this for a second and get off the next thing and then I don't know. Basically, do you want to add anything to this conversation while you're here? Now he is. Good morning, community board. Yep. Thank you. I've been listening quite intently. Um, it's still not clear to me um, whether you are still interested in pursuing a plan change or whether you are looking at um, recommending uh, to a consent holder a variation to a consent that they hold. So it'd be quite good to tease that out a little bit. Um, council doesn't have the power to to um, vary a consent by re resolution. It would have to be an application to the council from the consent holder. <clears throat> so um, I, I just thought I'd put that in the mix. So well, while you're thinking about what you what additional resolution you might want to craft up. Uh, the first that point you're saying. making, Leslie, through you, Mr. Chair, is is um, which which we are at a fork in the road, and which which fork you want to now go down yes. in terms of that. Is it still the the um, plan change, which is a significant process, or the the uh, very suggested re re a consent variation? Yeah, uh, that's the first guidance we would need as staff from you. Uh, yeah, I mean, our recommendation in here is to um, uh, not proceed with a resource consent as opposed to a plan change. Um, while there's, I mean, the rule could be tweaked and better outcome could be reached, it's a very long walk for a short drink of water that you might not get. Um, <laughs> and we go for resource uh, amendment to the resource consent to begin with, and then sort of down the track, look at the changing yeah. plan as a district-wide. Yes, depending and on what happens through council. That's, that's a that, to me, sounds like the best. That's a path you could follow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and particularly in light of the, you know, the RMA is about to be thrown out and we're getting yeah. some new acts, there's going to be big changes in the planning sphere so, um, over the next few years. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we're having to do plan changes in a few years. So I think we can go round and round this, but I think it really has to go back to council. Thank you for the discussion on that. Um, should we there now do a motion recommending that it go back to council? Yeah. So, what's your wording that you want for the motion? Uh, oh, Leslie, Leslie. Oh. Just one more point I'd like to make. The the um, the report actually um, covers off some internal processes that we could look to to assisting. Um, people who want to have small events. Uh, we understand from internal discussions that um, there are some overlaps and duplications of processes that are happening. We could actually, um, you know, you might want to um, to request that council has a look at some of its internal processes to help um, people who want to have small events to, to, to get through our red tape more easily. Yeah, so I'm number three, yeah. uh, you had four, and you stand at specifying the events. Um, up to a thousand. That's why I took I mentioned the fifteen hundred. In the end, it's going to be a matter of what's the best way and most effective way to progress this, and and, and I, um, do we pass a resolution saying what we stated? Yeah, you know, what Gary is asking for this legal staff is what's the best resolution that this board can provide today that we feed up to council to show us. It's direct the direction it would like for it to be achievable to, to achieve what they're trying the, the objective to achieve what they're trying to achieve yeah, and deliver. Okay. So, I mean, staff, that, you know, that, that's that's what we're that's what they're asking us. Yeah. Is in terms of then to provide the council with that 
with some sort of direction that that's what now obviously it's it's not to go down the path of a district plan change that you know we say that already in there that our recommendation is for it to actually be retained as it is but what is it that we're what gary's asking is what is it that we're suggesting is a possible solution instead yeah, I mean, if you're not going down the district plan plan change, then resource component is sort of your option, uh, and you can essentially apply for whatever you like. You've just got to justify that um, in terms of the well, well, yeah. yeah. um, you may have amended uh, uh, what you're going to be saying is that I mean, thinking about what we've, we've thought about. Yeah. Um, so we need to say that we recommend the council. Um, Support a change that enables uh, functions, non-commercial functions, or no, the functions uh, enables events to be held um, with more than 500 people present. That's probably yeah, the fact of the development. Yeah, and hopefully for the next council meeting. All of, I thought of something, but you people more likely think of something, and we can make yeah, it happen. Yeah, into the council resolution. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think um, the thing is, you you are aware now of, of what we're asking, and what we want is the most simplistic way of getting through that. Yeah. So, is is that sufficient for the motion that you've got? Uh, yes. Yeah. Through the chair, we just need to be clear on what point three is going to be. Have we? I initially had request staff consider adding an option to a report to council for a resource consent that varies the amount of people permitted at events on Williams Park Reserve from 500 to 1500. Um, but it, that sounds like it's changing again a little bit. Sorry, I'm just trying to share on screen. What What's our end result here for that third line? <laughs> yeah, I think we might be getting a little bit yeah. between yeah. The, yeah. the district plan and the uh, resource yeah. consent. Yeah, the yeah. Line yeah. Line yeah. Line yeah. Line the, the resource we're not we're not amending rule seven in the district no, 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 we, no, we, no, 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 we can have events on Williamson Park with all the 500 people 20 times a year there is a, a limit between the dates 27th and the 4th of January that no commercial events can happen um but we would need to have a copy of that consent in front of us yeah really to go through it but there isn't a limit of 500 people in the resource consent yeah well that might be a and to, and to be fair, yeah. um, I have met with lots of event organisers over the time and uh, while we've had this consent, and there really isn't such a thing as a free event anymore. There, yeah. there are things that we have to put in. We're talking toilets, we're talking security fencing, we're talking traffic management plans. Legislation has changed around those kind of things. Yeah. Health and safety um, is more prevalent and the standards have risen. Um, and the costs come into events. So gone are the days where you're going to get people saying, I'm going to come and do a free event on New Year's Eve and we'll open the park up and everybody can come in because the sure. times have changed. But the council used to give funds to the summertime festival that covered toilets and things of that sort. There were issues with that. The last meeting I went to with the summer festival, the St John's removed all their support from any events going forward because of the number of um, issues with alcohol. Yeah, but that was uh, like, that, that was when we had a cut back on the way the police used to operate. <clears throat> with last Christmas they, they up there at the game again. And that, that was one of the problems. We used to we used to sit and watch as entertainment. Young people arrived, police go over, get all the goods out and pour, pour it out. And no one after a while, the word went around you do not bring alcohol in, otherwise it's going to be poured out. And that never happened then for about three or four years and then everything just took advantage of it. Dean, do you want to say something? Yeah, um, Kia ora, just through the chair, um, I would um, suggest that we don't uh, try and look at what those restrictions are um, individually. Um, we just accept that there are conditions that need to be reviewed. Um, so a potential recommendation could be um, that you recommend that the restrictions or the conditions in the resource consents that enable events 
be reviewed and any changes or variations are sought. That's better. Yeah. Okay. Thank That's you very much. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can get into the secrecy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We've got the um, and, and could could I ask that that be included to be specific to Williamson Park um, so that the recommendation yeah. resource contained in the resource consent for Williamson Park. Because it's there, we, we had a two day or, yeah. or yeah. would we be better to uh, include it as the, the southeastern ward? So and that's not our reasons. No, 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 no,
I'll answer any questions you have on these. Yes. Um, I move we receive the report. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, so it's Kay and Dave Easter for the work program. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, just picking up on the, the boardwalk, and it's a point that um, Terry raised uh, in an email to us. While we understand the issues with the timber, et cetera, could um, cause some, some delays there, there are some aspects like the showers, et cetera, um, which aren't subject to those timber delays. Can, can those parts of the project go ahead while we're waiting for the timber to be sorted out? Uh, it will be... Uh most beneficial if we do the whole lot together so the answer really is Ken, uh, through the chair um i would prefer that it's a it's one package it's led to one contract and we'll do that so um i think um unfortunately we're encountering delays on everything at the moment so that would be my preference uh, ken okay. i think i think terry and ken make a valid point you can still have showers operating without a boardwalk because by the time we get the boardwalk done, we may, may be cheaper to be using gold rather than wood. So um, all I'm saying is at least the public would love to be able to come out and have a shower. And if we can do it in a way that could be adapted when the boardwalk goes in, yep. that would be greatly appreciated because I'm not holding my breath on the, on the wooden boardwalk going down in some close future. And I just think we want to help show the public we're doing something for them. And as much as it, in the ideal world, yes, doing to get us great. But I think we've done the way, realising it might have to be slightly adapted when the board wall goes down. Okay, we'll look at that. Thank you. We'll look Thank at you. that. Definitely look at that. Thank you. Anything else? Any other comments in relation to um, what have we got here? Parks and reserves. Well, we've done Lou was supposed to attend the meeting and outline the work plan for the repairs and improvements around the reserves. And uh, his ears have been a very important oh, Eileen, did you see that photo I sent you with the hole in Winston Park? The cover's not on. No, no, you sent it as a text, so oh, I have to right. actually resend it as an email yeah, in the system. Yeah, no, it was just, I just suddenly, because we saw someone nearly fall down, and I went, oh, God. <laughs> It's all right now, I'll let you know. And has the new curb contract been let? Um, and who got it was a question that Terry asked. Can you answer that, Andrew? Uh, I can't, I'm afraid, but I can come back uh, through Eileen and confirm that. I believe it has been let, but I am not certain who to, um, uh, Dave. But I'll find out for you. Thank you very much. And OPEX, the Moanoanu East Side Cleanup um, work has taken place and they have done some very good work on that um, for it. It's looking good and I understand plantings to follow. Do you know anything about that or is that Bruce's? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't. Um, no, that's fine. Thank you. I think the planting is, is imminent because we're still in the uh, planting season at the moment, but um, right. I'm not sure exactly when. To be honest with you. And the other question you have was an update on the on the mountain bike park. Um, update for the concept drawing and engineering. Are, are you aware of anything there? No, I'm not. It's okay. I'm it's not um, at all. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you. I'm sorry. Got a question on the public conveniences. Um, yes. They've all got the same comment about talking over the phone to Iwi. Um, it seems to be uh, taking some time. How are we going with that? Why don't we try and get around the table? Um, lack of... Uh, Iwi have been consulted on all three toilets. Okay, uh, so that's no longer a problem? No, I don't believe so. No. And the toilets are being manufactured as we speak. The um, Permaloo have a contractor has had uh, some uh, staffing issues with regard to COVID. 
but they're all under construction. The consultation's been done, and uh, those are uh, now, I believe, are on track. So um, uh, I would expect to see some action in those uh, during the, towards the end of this month. So they should go from orange to green then by the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Right, can we move that? Be accepted. Can we move then, please, that the work program be accepted? I'll second that. You've done that, don't we? Well, okay, I've just got one more question, if I may. Before yes, I put um, The footpath, the new footpath at Hinnema Street, um, yep. there was talk of. Um, Tenders closing 14th of March to see what how the market is and what the costs are like. What was the result of that? Sorry, which one are you referring to? Construction. Two six. Two six. Two six. Two six. Two six. I don't. Um, two six eight eight. Just bear with me, please. I'm trying to get it on. Number five on the left. Number five. Under Roads and Footpaths, Hinnie Mile Street. Just a minute, uh, Ken. My computer is uh, not behaving itself at the moment. Uh, it, it was included in the Barracloff tender. Just share that on screen there, if that helps. Sorry. Can I beg your pardon? Would you mind repeating it again, please, for me? OK, the question is that um, we were looking to do a, um, a section of Hinnema Street as a new footpath. Yep. And the report says that it, the tender was closing on the 14th of March to allow understanding of costs and market conditions. I don't know who's got that, unfortunately, but I can find out. If some advice could come to the board as to whether that's a go or whether the costs are blown through the the roof or whatever so um yeah. i will um i will find out and i will make sure that the board is advised thank you thank you all for me all in favor all in favor say aye 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 thank you thank you um We've received a community board action plan. And we're up to six point one, so we need to the action plan. Oh, okay. Yep, so we need a move on second of the board action schedule. Okay, move on second of the board. Gary, second of Yes. Thank you. I. <laughs> yeah, all in favour say aye. Aye. Um, and the members' reports. Any members' reports? Um, so, yeah, so you've done the action schedule? Good, yep. Um, <coughs> I've just been uh, attending the uh, library meeting. Do you need to move a second for the members' reports? Wait for a second for the members' reports. Can we have a move and second for the members' I'll move. I'll second it. Um, just over the um, COVID-19, actually, the way the library is going to be um, running. So we've had several meetings. Um, as you know, the librarian um, was sort of stood down because of um, COVID. COVID restrictions. Um, so I think they're in the throes of trying to find replacement. But they have a, um, a very capable lady in charge at the moment. So, <coughs> so we've yeah. had several meetings on that. But the library is still running okay. very efficiently. Ken, have you got any reports for that? No, no. Having been out of town for a while, I haven't been attending any meetings. And, um, okay. and Gary? Nothing. But uh, just to say that I've had a number of different groups on different topics contact me. A lot of it tends to be that they're not aware of what's been happening. Hence, my raising uh, with uh, the last council meeting the need 
to have some way of informing people of what's happening with signage and uh, uh, the chief executive is looking at that as a proposal and it was warmly received by the mayor and uh, and all councillors. So I think particularly somewhere like Fong Mata, there's so many people around the town, they don't get the local papers, they need to be informed and help the locals as well, actually looking at the picture, a photographic picture of a park or whatever's happening, what is proposed, and then after it's happening, how it's going to be done. If you have any concerns, da da da. So I just I think it's just then enables a continual consultation. Open. So I'm, I'm sure that will be something that we will receive by the one. Thank you. Um, Eileen Terry, Lou, and myself had a meeting on site meeting in relation to area of um, opposite the cemetery in relation to possibilities of moving soil from 101 Lindsay Road. And that's a discussion. Um, the Blake is apparently going to approach people to see whether that's a, a, an idea that can be used to remove it from there. I understand that the owners of the forest land don't want any soil moved onto the cycle track until such time as settlement has been made with Iwi. So there's other discussions in relation to that. Um, I've attended a uh, community board meeting at um, Onimana, and uh, that was a good meeting. Uh, there's another one this Saturday. Um, there's nothing really come out of it. They have a new committee or some new committee members, and they seem keen to. It's for the right parties. Yes, for the right parties, only Martin for the right parties. Um, yeah, so that, that's that's all I have to report from there. Nothing else? Mm -hmm. right. um, so you can now close the meeting. Uh, all so, those in favour for the um, oh, sorry, yeah, through chair, thank you. Always. Aye. Aye. Now you can formally close the meeting. Okay, so we formally close the meeting at 11.17. Thank you for your attendance, everybody. Appreciate your input. And um, we'll go on after lunch with the workshop. Well, Thank you very much. We'll just go straight on, yeah. Okay. Yeah.